Welcome to Japanese History for Everyone, where we are again taking another deep dive into one of Japan's female leaders. Today, we are going to be talking about the first official Empress of Japan, Empress Suiko. So as far as to the historical accuracy of what we know about her life, she is in the part of the Kojiki and Nihon Shoki where we could say with 90% certainty that she did exist, but the details can be a bit fuzzy. So she was born in 552 as the third daughter of Emperor Kinmei. After the death of his first wife, she became the consort of her half-brother Emperor Bidatsu and bore him seven children. Emperor Bidatsu died from a mysterious disease that was accompanied by strange sores, which has been theorized to have been an early case of smallpox and died in 585. After his death, he was succeeded by his brother who became Emperor Yome, who two years later also died of illness. So during this period, Japan was going through a process of change that led to a massive power struggle between two rival clans. We've talked about this in previous videos. Clan struggle is a huge continuity within Japanese history. So this power struggle had been increasing in tension since the reign of Emperor Bidatsu. And it's a result of Buddhism, which had been introduced via China and was rising in popularity. So on one hand, you have the Soga clan, who come from an area in Kyushu that has close ties with Korea. So they're used to interacting with foreigners and they heavily favor Buddhism. On the other hand, you have the Mononobe clan, who is starkly against Buddhism and believe that it's going to anger the Shinto Kami, which are the gods of the Shinto religion, if they begin to allow Buddhism to spread across Japan. So naturally, when Emperor Yomei dies, the Soga and the Mononobe clans favor different successors. The end result is that the Soga wins out and Emperor Shushun ascends the throne. Unfortunately, this is where the good relationship between the Soga and Emperor Shushun ends. Emperor Shushun becomes suspicious of Soga no Umako, head of the Soga clan, and when Soga no Umako finds out about these concerns, he has the emperor assassinated. So what's a Soga to do? They ask the future emperor Suiko to fill the power vacuum and bring stability to the imperial household, preventing more infighting between the two clans. Empress Suiko's reign is associated with stability, great leadership, and a lot of positive political, social, and economic reform. She appoints the son of Emperor Yomei, Prince Shotoko, also known as the legendary Shotoko Taishi, who together with Soga no Umako, spread Buddhism and establish a centralized government. Although many have argued that she had little influence and that it was in fact Prince Shotoku and Soga no Umako who led the country, there is proof that she was able to stand up to both of them and even deny some of their wishes when she disagreed with them. Also of note, she wasn't a regent in the traditional sense, such as she was acting as an empress on behalf of a successor who was not yet of age. In fact, she didn't even have a successor until she was on her deathbed, at which two potential young men were chosen from the grandchildren of Emperor Bidatsu and Emperor Yomei. When she died, Emperor Jomei was chosen because Soga no Umako claimed it was her dying wish, but truthfully, it's probably because he was the person who supported the Soga clan the most. And once again, the Soga clan was able to win out against the people who opposed them. So Empress Suiko is not only the first official empress, she's one of the leaders of Japan that led over one of the most important periods of Japanese history, a period when Buddhism was for the first time becoming openly accepted and spreading across Japan, and a period where the government began to shape into what it would become ultimately in its later periods. So for that reason, she's remembered fairly favorably. So that's it for today. Stay tuned. In the next couple of months, we'll be talking more about Japanese female leaders. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and also subscribe, hit the notification bell, all those different things so you can stay tuned to more Japanese history.